everybody. I'm going to show you today how to properly vent a microwave to your outside, to the actual outside wall right behind the microwave. Um, the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Um, I moved into this house probably two and a half years ago or so, and I never even thought about it not being vented until I started to realize it started to smell a little more and um, it, the air was just recirculating into the house. So these microwaves have a few different um, options. You can either vent straight up, you can rent, vent right out the back of the microwave, or you can actually recirculate it through the front. Um, when it recirculates through the front, it circulates through a filter, um, a charcoal filter that looks like this, and it's supposed to clean up the smell, even though it doesn't really do that great of a job. Um, and it actually leaves a lot of residue inside of the, the microwave where the venting happens. So let's get started. So I already took the microwave down. You could see where it, where it was. Um, it's pretty easy to to take it down actually. Um, I'll show you really quickly. So all it is to take it down is a couple of um, bolts that go through into into the microwave bolt in. Um, and then the power cord just runs right through the top here and plugs in. Um, some people actually go up through their cabinet and vent it out the back. Some people go up through their cabinet and vent it out the roof. I'm going to just go straight to the back and vent it right out the side of the house and not destroy my cabinets, especially because this is a smaller house, so I need the space. Here is the microwave, and this is actually where the filter goes. The charcoal filter and it blows out here, filters it, and comes out into your room. So I'll show you next how to switch your fan around. So right now this is the fan. The fan right now is actually, if you look at it, it's blowing inside of it, it's blowing out this way. We have to switch it so that it's blowing out the back. If you wanted to vent up, you'd switch it so that it's blowing out the top. So what we do is we take these screws out here, pretty simple. three of them and those three are going to actually take off this top bracket uh, the top brackets off you take out the one bolt in the back this bolt in the back is connected to the motor now we got that off now what you do is switch your your boat blower so if you take this see this is the front it's blowing towards the front if you flipped it up it's gonna be blowing towards the top so I'm going to have to switch this here so that it's blowing towards the back. Alright, so in order to switch this, I'm going to go ahead and set the phone down here, the camera. And what I do is I take this, i got to switch this to the other side just so that it's not going to bind. So i got to turn it this way so that it's blowing out the back. So, and then I just flip it, put it into the, put it back in here, so that it looks now, the fan is blowing towards the back and it's open. And then you put everything back together, and then I'll go to the next step. See, uh, the next step is complete, I did... All I did was scored it with a sheetrock knife, and then I'm actually I'm not ex I'm not sure what electricals back there, so I don't want to take any power tools and start drilling the sheetrock. Not to mention it would be a giant mess. So I'm just gonna score it over and over again with a sheetrock knife to not make a mess and to be extra careful, and then just take that piece out. I'll come back when I'm done with that. Now that we got that all done here. I'm not a camera expert, obviously. Now that we got that done, got it cut out. Just use the um, sheetrock knife. Just had to score it, cut through, push it back, cut it out. No problem. Um, now I have to cut. Basically, I just got to take a drill bit, and at all four corners, go straight through to outside. So I'm going to use an extra long drill bit here. <sighs> Get this long drill bit and I'm gonna go straight through 
at each corner. That way I know outside where my hole is and I can go cut from there. But I see where this came through out here. I took a level with a ruler and uh, marked some lines so now I know exactly where to cut. So that's, if I cut right there, it should be fine. I'm going to use a Dremel. <clears throat> I have a Dremel with a, a blade on it. That's good for plastics and vinyls. So that's the next step. All right, so now I used my knife to cut out the, the vinyl siding. So now I just need to I'm gonna use a jigsaw and just cut that the board out there. Now that's all done. I cut that out. Now I have a clean hole straight through. Um, I'm probably gonna insulate a little bit more in here just to kind of tuck it in nicely. And then I'll run my plumbing through. Here's the issue. I'm guessing people run into, um, and this is actually why I made this video, because I couldn't find one that had this being installed in vinyl siding, is that you're going to get it, on, it's not going to be level, one way that you put it. You don't want a huge gap down here at the bottom, because you can see that there is room to go in there, There's room for air to get in there. So what you have to actually do is take off this one piece of siding right here, just lift it up, um, and they actually have a special tool for that, a little hook tool. Um, and once you get that siding up, then you'll be able to put this in and it'll actually sit flush with the entire piece of siding. Because this siding that I have is five inches this way. So obviously this is not going to fit. Even if it was right perfect on center, it wouldn't fit. So I'm going to do that quickly and I'll show you what it looks like after. I got the siding off using a little siding prior. Um, now you can see, though, this is actually wider. So now I gotta trim this out a little bit more so that it can fit in here nicely. And then the siding actually can go around it so that when the water comes down, it just drains off the top of the siding instead of getting stuck behind it. All right, as you can see, I took that outside mount back out. Um, I'm going to put the microwave back in now. This is kind of a two-person job. I'm going to do it by myself because I don't have anybody here. Um, but if you do have somebody, please use that person because it is pretty heavy. Um, and it has to, the microwave has to slide on here and this, the tube that I made, or if you have the one that came with it, that's, you know, similar size probably has to go into that hole. So I'm going to do that. So one thing I'm going to make sure I do also, because I made this custom, I don't want there to be a lot of air leaks. So I am going to actually put some tape on it. This is specifically made for, for heating. So this will be good to make sure that, um, one, it doesn't get too warm, uh, even though this is just cold air. Um, and also that it stays on there and, creates a good seal. You can see I've gotten this all nice and taped up. No leaks in there so every time I run it it's just gonna blow nicely. Like I said earlier I didn't put a, um, a damper in there just because I have one on the outside uh, wall mount so I'm just gonna use that one. Um, primarily I would have liked to have a second damper in there but the previous owners didn't leave me anything so I had to kind of custom make this. So I jumped ahead a little bit here. Uh, I got the microwave back up. I kind of used this Christmas box as a support just because I'm doing this by myself. Um, basically it just slides back onto those prongs and then I pushed the back through. You can kind of see a little bit of light there and then I put my screws back in. So that holds it from from tipping forward. Now I'm going to go outside and I'm going to put the that um, wall piece back on right here. So this is what it looks like now. We got the fan facing the right way. We have this piece that I made. 
and then we have everything cut out correctly. Now what I think I might do, just to make sure it's insulated, I might put a little bit of tuck some insulation around it a little bit better, just so that we don't get any cold air in there before I put my wall cap on. Right, so um, I got this all cleaned up. I also cleaned the siding just to make sure there's no dirt when it sticks. You want it to stick and be bonded well. I got two different kinds of caulking, which is probably um, overkill, but I really don't want it to leak. So I got um, this acrylic sealant, which I'm going to put a bead right around the base. And then even close, and then a little closer to the outside, I'm actually going to put this quad, which is specifically made for outdoor. Um, make sure if you use this, you do not smooth it with your finger because it will just smudge. It doesn't, it's not like normal caulking. So be aware of that. And then once I put those two beads around, then I'm going to put it into the siding like I had shown you before. And then I'll put the siding back on. And then I'll screw it in and put the siding back on. This is what we got it looking like. Nice and cocked all the way around. That should create a good seal. And then this will screw it in also. I'll show you what it looks like when it's screwed in. And I actually got it all screwed in at all the corners. The inside looks pretty good. I'm going to put some, uh, some of that tape in here too to make sure it's sealed up. And we should be good. As a precaution here too, probably didn't need to, but I did run just a bead of that um, outdoor silicone just over the top, just in case if any water gets in there. If, the wa if water gets in there, we're going to have a problem with it um, soaking a lot more than just that. It'll soak the plywood. And that's what it looks like all completely done. I did take some of that clear caulking too and run just this fine bead just right around where I had to cut out the siding. Just in case. It is close enough to the soffit, but so I don't think it's going to get any water there anyways, but it's a good precautionary. And that's what it looks like from the outside. I'll take a look a little further. <laughs> Sinks in nicely. And the job is completely done. Have everything cleaned up the kitchen here. Now if you check, you can always check it. Here's the fan, so high speed. I'm just going to put it on low speed, and then I'll go out here, and you can tell if it's working, because that flap will be up. You can hear it. And that's it. It's all done.